what shall we say unto the Lord? All I want to say is thank you, Lord. What shall I say unto the Lord? All I want to say is thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All I want to say is thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All I want to say is thank you, Lord. Lord is so good. Lord is so good. Lord is so good. He's so good to me. Lord is so good. Lord is so good. Lord is so good. He's so good to me. Father, we thank you. Oh, Father, as we are entering into a time where we are going to look into your word for the next 45 to 50 minutes, we pray, Father, that the time will be useful, fruitful, productive. And it will bring change into the hearts and lives of people. Amen. We thank you and we love you for this blessed opportunity. Amen. And everyone who has gathered already, we bless them in the name of Jesus. And those who are yet to join, we pray, Father, wherever they are, you will give them the grace and the desire to join. Amen. And your name will be glorified. We say thank you, O Lord. We worship and adore you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Forgive us if there is anything that is in us. That is not right in your sight. But we ask you, O oh Lord, that we, you will tune us so that we will listen from you and we will be able to deliver what you have for the people. Lord, it's not our education. It's not what our ability or charisma. It is just your presence and it is you that what we need. We love you, Jesus. Father God, we worship you, adore you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, Father, we ask this prayer. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord for thank. I really thank the Lord for giving us his time and to be in the presence of the Lord. It's a great joy and to be here together with all of you. Um, we are not going to spend more than one hour anyway, so let us start the meeting. We were looking into Genesis chapter 16 last week. And in chapter 16 last week, when we came towards the end, we saw that Hagar ran away and the Lord, Lord appeared to Hagar and said, Hagar, I want you to go back and submit yourself to your mistress, Zerai. And then he said, I have seen you and I'm going to bless you a child. And uh, then the Lord spoke to him, or spoke to her and said, because I have seen your affliction, your struggle, you should name him Ishmael, and I will bless him as well. And uh, when Abraham was 86 years old, um, say, um, Hagar gave, gave him a baby boy, and uh, Abraham named him um, Ishmael. And that's what we saw uh, last week. Now, there is something which I would like to say before I start from the verse chapter 15. In chapter 15, we saw the Lord confirmed the covenant with Abraham. And in 16, we see Abraham getting married to Hagar and having a child. Now, if you look at it, it looks so beautiful and fantastic. As soon as the Lord gave him the covenant, saying that you will have a child, your children will be numerous, and I will bless them, I will give them this land. In the, within a couple of years, he is having a baby boy. Wow, what a blessing. But this is the problem. The baby boy, Ishmael, was not the promised child, or he was not the covenant, covenant child. He was a child of mistake. And uh, there is a big, big, big difference between a child of mistake 
and a child of promise. When a child of promise comes, all the promises are attached to that child. But when a child of mistakes come, and that child will always bring disturbance and trouble. Now, when, when Ishmael was born, it is like, you know, the promise has come through. But it was not the promise come through. It was a mistake that happened to Abraham and Sarai, to both of them. Now, when we come to chapter 16 to 17, when we come to 17, we see when Abraham, when Abram, okay, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am almighty God, walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Then Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make nations of you and kings shall come from you and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Also, I give you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger or the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Now, this is what we see in chapter 17. Now, when the Lord spoke to Abraham or Abraham in the chapter 15, and after that, we do not know exactly how old Abraham was, but then Abraham went and slept with Hagar, and Hagar had a child, and now when this is happening, Abram is 99 years old. So the last time Abram heard the word of God was at least when he was eight, seven, um, say 85 years old, at least 85, because Ishmael was born on 86th year. So that means the lady conceived maybe when he was 85. So from my, according to my calculation, Abraham did not hear anything from the Lord for almost 15 years of time. He did not hear any word from the Lord. He had nothing from the Lord. He had no communication with the Lord for almost 15 years. Now, this is where we struggle. Once the Lord has given us a promise, this is the place where we all struggle and we ask for confirmation again and again and again and again. We got a confirmation today from a prophet, next day through a dream, the day after through a pastor who was preaching, after that through a vision, then when we were reading the word, then somebody called and said, in a two weeks time, we got five confirmation. Even then we are looking for more confirmation. Why? Because we are not yet having the faith in the Lord that what he promised will come to pass. So look at Abraham. Abraham, it's, more, it's been 15 years, at least 14 years, that Abraham was not been hearing from the Lord. So many people think that Abraham was hearing from the Lord every day. No, it was not on a daily basis. Abraham was not hearing from the Lord on a daily basis. Abraham listened to the Lord and whatever he heard, he believed. And he began to follow the Lord. And that was the quality of Abraham. In the same way, when we do the same, when we listen to the Lord, once he says, and when we say that, Lord, you said, I trust you and I believe you. No more questions asked. And in that case, let me tell you, even if after 10 years, if you're ready to believe, when everything seems impossible, you are ready to believe. The problem with us is that we always look at our time, our age, our wrinkles, our tooth, you know, our gray hair. We, we always look at that. And young girl will look at and say, 
you know, uh, I was 70, 18 years old when I was ready to get married. Now I am 26 years old. Eight years is gone. Next week, I'll be 27. Nine years gone. Look at my friends. They are all married and they are having children. And some of them will be grand grandmothers by their 40. And what will be my position? You know, when, when the Lord said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you children. You will sit in another land. But we forget to trust the Lord or his promises because we don't have faith in him. Let me tell you this. When you allow circumstances to control you, the devil will use the circumstances to put your faith down, to pressurize you. But when you put your trust in him and faith in his word and not on circumstances, then nothing can challenge you. Note this down, okay? When you allow circumstances to challenge you, when you are afraid of circumstances, when you run away, when you see circumstances, when you are panicking, when you see circumstances, devil will always use the circumstances to take, challenge you, deviate you, push you down, and to pull you out of your blessing. But if you put your trust and faith in the Lord and not in circumstances, you will stand firm, you will stand strong. Amen. And another thing you need to be careful is that you should, you know, this is I heard from T.D. James, and I thought I should tell you this. You should know that I am enough. I am enough. That means I have the capacity to do it. See, what we try to do is that we try to please people. We want to hear from people saying that, you know, you have the I have the capacity to do it. Now, yesterday we had a meeting, online meeting. It was in Malayalam. It was a group in Kerala called Antiyakal Abhishek. Okay? That means uh, the anointing of the last days, our last day outpouring. And we preached in that group. And, the, and the, while I was praying, the Lord told me what to do exactly, how I should preach, where should I stand, what dress I should wear, where, where should people stand next to me. The Lord spoke to me exactly what to do. And I said, this is how I'm going to do. If not, I'm not doing this meeting. I'm not, I cannot do the meeting other way around because the Lord told me exactly how to stand, how to preach, everything. So we did that. And within 24 hours, we have more, the, the, that message was watched by more than 1,000 people in less than 24 hours. So the people who did the show, the live show, they texted me saying a couple of messages saying that, Pastor, it is amazing that it is less than one hour. Uh, with less than 24 hours, more than 1,000 people have been watching this. And it is amazing that, you know, uh, and so much and so on. So what I'm saying, when he says, I feel, wow, I can do it. No, 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 no. It is not others to tell you what you can do it. You should have the confidence that I am able to do it. It is not others. Now, if you look to hear from others, you will never be satisfied in life. You will never achieve in life. Because as I was speaking a few days ago about David, that was I was talking about David, David about the discouragement. His parents, his father discouraged him. Um, Samuel never believed in him much. His brothers discouraged him and never believed in him. Saul the king never believed in him. But he believed in himself. He believed in God and in his ability. He said, my ability is more than enough. My ability is more than enough to destroy the giant, the so-called giant Goliath. I don't need your shield. I don't need your um, dress. I don't need your helmet. I don't need anything. I, uh, whatever I have, that is more than enough for me to go and destroy Goliath. This is what you need to know. When you know that your capacity, your intelligence, your beauty, your, um, your character, everything is more than enough for you to win in life, Whoever comes against and they say against you, it doesn't go, it's not going to affect you because you know that you are more than capable. I pray that you will have that capacity in your life. Now, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, it says the Lord appeared to Abraham. It is not spoken, appeared. The soul, that means Abraham saw, maybe in a vision or somewhere, Abraham saw the Lord and the Lord Almighty said to the Abraham, I am almighty God, walk before me blameless. See, there is no one who can say I am almighty other than the Lord. Whoever says I am almighty will die when they're 70, 80, 90 years old. Nobody is going to live more than 120, 130 years. There are some people says in Nepal, there's a person saying, living he's 142 years old. Praise God. 
But what I'm saying, when you are 70, 80, 90 years old, almost every inch of you is fading and aching. Well, especially when you cross that age. Now, nobody can say, I am almighty. But here, the Lord, the creator of universe, the whole universe exists in him. He says to Abram, Abram, I am almighty God. That means I am the Lord who can do everything. I am the Lord who created everything. I am the Lord who is all powerful. I can do that, what he's saying. And he says to Abram, Abram, walk before me blameless. So that, see, the walking of you can be blameless in front of people, but that doesn't matter to God. What matters to the Lord is, are you walking blameless in his eyes? If you are walking blameless in the eyes of people, it doesn't matter. Because you can walk blameless in the eyes of people, hiding, doing everything in life. Nobody is going to know what you are doing in life. But what the Lord is saying, you should be blameless before me, before the Lord. And then what I will do, I will make my covenant between you, me and you, and I will multiply you exceeding. Look at that word the Lord used. When you walk blamelessly before me, what I'm going to do, I am going to establish my covenant, my promises with you, my law with you, and I'm going to multiply you exceedingly. You need to believe and say to yourself that my Lord is the God of multiplication. He is the Lord of multiplication. Who you see? He is the Lord of multiplication. Whatever that you have in your hand, the Lord will multiply it. That is the importance of the Lord. He will multiply it for you. And that's what he says here. He says that I will multiply. So what you should do? He says, you should know that I am the almighty God. Number one, you should walk before, not the people, but before me blameless. Number two. Number three, when you do that, I will make my covenant with you and you and me, and I will multiply you exceedingly. See, there's a difference between multiplying you and multiplying you exceedingly. When you go to chapter Genesis chapter 1, 2, 3, when you read that, when the Lord blessed them in chapter, I think chapter, yeah, it, it, in Genesis chapter 2, I think, the, when the Lord blessed Adam and he said, be fruitful and multiply, subdue the earth. There also the covenant was given to uh, Adam and saying, be fruitful and multiply. So fruitfulness and multiplication and authority is in the covenant of the Lord. When you trust in him, when you believe in him, when you obey him, and when you begin to walk with him, what happens, and especially if you can walk with blamelessly with him, that is a fantastic thing. He says he will establish covenant with you. Now, uh, there is something which, as a believer, you must, you must check. Now, a couple of, steps, couple of days ago, somebody asked me a question. Pastor, why was Jacob blessed, even though he was a deceiver? Okay, he was a deceiver. And uh, I gave an answer. I'm not, I'm, we're not going to discuss that now, but when we come to Jacob, we will discuss on that. Now, when we look at here, we see that when the Lord came to him and said, I will multiply exceedingly. Now, Abraham is listening to the Lord after almost 15 years, but the moment Abraham heard it, what he did, he fell on his face and go fell on his face. That means in, in, in Greek it said prosecune. That means that means prostrate before the Lord, st stretching your hand forward, putting your face on the ground. You are worshiping the Lord. That is the actual form of worship. That shows complete surrender. When we really worship, that means complete surrender. So here the Lord, when the moment the Lord spoke to Abraham, what he said, he fell on his face and God continued to begin to talk to him. And then verse 4, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you and you shall be father of many nations. Now, the meaning of Abraham means exalted father, exalted father. But uh, Abraham means father of many nations. Now, there's a huge difference in between. No longer shall you be called Abram. Now, here the Lord comes and change the name of Abram to Abraham or Abraham. Now, there are very few instances we see the Lord has given the name to people. This is one of the instances. 
And here it says, your name will no longer be Abram. Every name was given by the Chaldeans and the other people where your forefathers, I'm going to change it. Those name is not the name that you should be called. If you really want to be blessed, I have a name for you in my heart. And I'm going to put that name for you. And I'm not going to be much, make much difference in that name, but I'm going to add something into that name. And when, you, when I add that name, you are going to be blessed. And he's put that name as Abraham. And now from Abram, he changed to Abraham. And he said, no longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you father of many nations. Now, I want you to look at this sentence. Here he says, the Lord says, for I have made you. It, the Lord did not say, I will make you. No. In the beginning, when we look at chapter 15, uh, maybe when we, chapter 12, verse 2, it says, I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. And you shall be a blessing. Here it says, I will make you a great nation. But when we come to 17, it's all changed. It says, for I have made you a great nation. Or I have made you a father of many nations. See, what is the difference? In chapter 12, verse when he was 75 years old, when the Lord spoke to him, he said, I will make you. Now, after 24 years, the Lord says, I have made you. What is the difference? When we look at it, Ishmael is born. Okay? Ishmael is born. Now, Ishmael is not the child of promise. But even then, it is the blood and seed of Abram. So, no doubt. Now, Ishmael was born when, when Abraham was not Abraham, when he was Abram. That means, I will, I will, come, to you, I will come to that point. Ishmael was born... After he spoke came about the covenant, but before the name was changed. But Isaac was born after the covenant, after the name was changed. There's a huge difference. Now, when he was, Ishmael was born, he was Abram, and the, but the covenant was made. But the covenant made was not through Hagar. The covenant was made through for Isaac through Sarai. Now, when it comes here, as soon he says, I have made you a father of many nations. What the Lord is saying, Abraham, I have done the surgery, whatever is needed to do within you and you, Sarai. And I have done all the work already. Now, I have seen how am I going to do it. It is all, the process is done. I was looking at you for the last... Exceedingly fruitful. Wow. That I want to be my portion. Exceedingly fruitful. And I will it says, um, and I will make the exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Now, when the Lord says exceedingly fruitful, there is a great impact to it. Then he the beginning he says, I am going to bless you exceedingly. Here it says exceedingly fruitful. Exceedingly means beyond your imagination. And that is the promise the Lord given to Abraham. Exceedingly fruitful. Fruitfulness, when we talk about fruitfulness, always um, what we talk about fruitfulness. I will say, um, when a child, when, when, a, when a lady gets married, the fruitfulness they are talking about is children. When you are doing some ministry, the fruitfulness people look at is the number of people that you come into your church. When you do something, the money that you have, we always look at fruitfulness in that way. But let me tell you, when the Lord make you fruitful, you will be fruitful in every way. Now, here the Lord spoke to Abraham and said, Abraham, I am going to make you exceedingly fruitful. Exceedingly. 
That word is a tremendous word which we must realize exceedingly. And uh, this is what my prayer is. Each and everyone who listens to me today, the Lord will bless you exceedingly. And you will be fruitful exceedingly. Your barns will overflow. You, you will enjoy the riches of the earth. You will enjoy all the blessings of the earth. And there will be everything that you need in your life so that you will not lack, but you will be able to give to people and to nations. That is exceeding blessing. And that is what it says. I will, you will be exceedingly fruitful and I will make nations of thee. Now, when, when we look at it, Abraham, with Sarai, he had one child, one child. But Isaac, with Rebekah, had two. And when it comes to Jacob, Jacob had 13, including Dina, the daughter. And when we look at Esau, Esau has plenty of children. See, fruitfulness began. Okay? Now, Abraham was able, not able to see that. Abraham was not able to see that. If you look at Jacob, Jacob is the one who got the who, who, who the Kovinian got attached to Isaac, from Isaac to Jacob, and Jacob to his generation. Now, if you look at Jacob, everything Jacob touched prospered, fruitfulness. He went to Levan's house, it was fruitful. He got married, fruitfulness. Whatever he touched, turned the gold. Fruitfulness after fruitfulness. See, when we look at it, that is an important thing. When the Lord is upon your life, when the Lord is with you, let me tell you, you will begin to see fruitfulness happening in every area of your life. Every area. And sometimes this is also you need to notice very importantly. When the time comes, the Lord says, depart from somebody, you have to depart from that person. Abraham departed from Lot. That was an important step. That must be, that is needed. When we come to Jacob, it was a time for Jacob to depart from Esau. So he has to run away. God took him away. So that also is the always we must know that fruitfulness is connected to your personal decision. And sometimes separation is very much needed to be fruitful in life. In the same way, separation from the world is needed. Separation from some kinds of sin which you are holding on to your life is needed for fruitfulness. Now, people say many times, I am not sinning. Now, this is the biggest mistake we make. We are not living in continuous sin. What we do, we do a mistake in once in six months. And then another six months. Then in four months, then in three months, then in one year, then in six months, then in two months, then in one year, one month. And then on the other side, we tell everybody, don't sin, don't sin, don't sin. We prove ourselves as holy and acceptable. And that becomes a hypocrisy. And we commit sin and we don't allow others to sin. Now, we should not allow others to sin. That's a good thing. But when we talk about ourselves and say, I am holy. Pastor, to be frank with you, I am not happy the way you talk to me, the way you look at me. And we will feel, wow, what a holy person. But in reality, there are lots of mistakes. And the Lord looks at it. The Lord looks at it. And the Lord says, this is the reason you are not fruitful. Because you are not truthful. One of the main reasons many people are not fruitful in life is because they are not truthful in life. Fruitfulness and truthfulness is very important. Always remember it. When you are truthful to God, the Lord will surely bless you, even in your mistakes. But when we try to put a mask on our face of hypocrisy and say, I am good, I am holy, I am the best. But when we have things behind us, you know, that's not the right thing. So I pray to each and every, pray for each and every one of you that you know when we are if with the Lord, let us leave that we should leave and let us run towards Him. Se get separated from whatever we need to get separated, and there it is very important. Now here it says, "Walk blameless before Me, and I will establish My covenant between Me and thee and thy seed after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God unto you and to thy seed after you." And I, and I will give you and to thy seed after you the land of thy sojournings and all the land of Canaan for as an everlasting possession and I will be their God. Now, hear that what the Lord is saying. Now, this is where we need to understand that when the Lord was blessing Abraham, the Lord blessed Abraham in such a way that Abraham was a Exceedingly fruitful in everything. Exceedingly fruitful. Now, after the Lord spoke to Abraham, 
Was there any change in Abraham all of a sudden? No. For Abraham, it took years after calling for Abraham to be blessed. If you are still waiting for the blessings of the Lord to come in your life, make sure, please make sure that you are believing and trusting in everything the Lord is telling you. Now let us go down quickly. And God said to Abraham, from the Aaron's Abraham, okay, as for you, thou shalt keep my covenant and thou and thy seed after thee throughout the generation. Um, okay. This is my covenant which shall, ye shall keep between you, me and you, and thy seed after thee. Every male among you shall be circumcised. And you shall be circumcised in thy flesh of your skin. And it shall be a token of covenant between you and me. Now look at it. Here the Lord says a tough thing to Abraham. Very tough thing. It says you, have, you must cut off your foreskin. Okay? Your foreskin of your genital, you must cut off. And this is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every male among you shall be circumcised and ye shall be circumcised in your flesh of your foreskin. Now, it says clearly, it must be done on the foreskin of your flesh and he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every male throughout your generations, he that is born in the house or brought with money of any other foreigner, that is not your seed. He that is born in your house and he that is bought with money must need be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. So here the Lord says, I want you to notice this. He says, this covenant shall be a covenant on your flesh. The Lord made a covenant. Okay. The Lord made a covenant with Abraham. The Lord came in between as a firing fiery torch and went between those pieces and the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. Now here, when the Lord came to make a permanent covenant with Abraham, the Lord spoke to Abraham and said, first of all, I'm going to change your name from Abram to Abraham. Now he also changed the name of Sarai. From Sarai, he changed his hair name to Zera. From my, prin my princess, okay, we are, I'm just going to take that. Now it says, um, say, say right, my princess to mother of nations. Two differences. Now from exalted father to the father of many nations, from my princess to mother of nations. So two names have been changed on the same day. Two names have been changed. Now the names have been changed, but then the Lord asked to make a covenant with him. And on that covenant, the Lord said, you must cut off your foreskin and that must be made on your flesh. And that is a covenant that you must make on your flesh as an everlasting covenant. Every male child born in your house, bought or slave, whoever living with you must cut their foreskin on the eighth day, on the eighth day. Now, this must be done throughout your generation. Must be done throughout your generations. Now, the question is, why did the Lord ask Abraham to, Abraham to change the name? When Abraham was telling his name in the beginning, Abraham said, this is my name. What's your name? Abraham. What do you mean? I mean, exalted father. Oh, you are exalted father. You have no children, but though, okay, no problem. But later, his name changed to Abraham. That means father of many nations. Now, when we look at Abraham and Sarah, the Lord has added something into it. From Zerai and Abraham to Abraham and Sarah, God added a H into it. Oh, that's a sound. Oh, into it. And what is it? Now, if it will, when we look at the Bible, we see Yahweh, Elohim, Messiah. All these end or in between, there is a sound of Ah, Elohim. What is it? It is the sound of God. In Hebrew, it shows Godship. It shows the presence of God. So what the Lord was saying to Abraham, that Abraham, all these days you are carrying the name of the world. Now I am going to connect my covenant with you. So I want to connect my name, your name. 
when i connect my name your name i must change your name when i change my name your name my name will be added as a surname or my added name my name will be added to your name when now my name is added to your name what happens the blessings comes in your name this is what abraham the lord was doing now when people get married when when i got married to sissy here and her surname was very difficult to pronounce okay her surname was i'm not saying her surname it was very difficult to pronounce so when we got married her name was surname was changed from that name to abraham so my name is manasse abraham her name changed from sissy to that name to sissy abraham why that means from that day it shows she doesn't belong to that family she belongs to a new family now in that new family she have rules and regulations and covenant and everything but the responsibility of the person to be a part of this family is to obey and to be within that family so that all the blessings of the family will be upon her now there are some people who says i don't want to change the name i don't like it i want to keep the name as it is perfectly fine perfectly fine no objections it's a personal choice but the change of surname from where it came from actually it came from a biblical culture it came from a biblical culture if when we look at uk and usa and all the european nations almost all the english speaking countries they automatically change the surname they change it now when they all change it nobody changes the surname they don't want to do it now this is the same thing the lord said lord said abram you been part of the world now my covenant is with you not with the world from the world i have chosen you because i have chosen you i am going to give my name to you i am not going to do much difference in your eyes but i am going to put my essence in you my presence in you my um, uh, myself in you so abram must be changed to abraham elohim or that uh, must come into you the same thing he did with sarah then what happens when the moment the presence of the lord comes into your life your situation changes your life will change that's the reason we need the presence of the lord in our life we must have presence of the lord without the presence of the lord it is impossible to survive it is impossible to survive now when you look at it when we use the name of jesus every knee shall bow every tongue confess that jesus is lord okay it says by the mention of the name of jesus every knee shall bow and it says the name of jesus is above every other name that means when i use my name manasseh i strongly believe the name of jesus is protecting my name above my name his name is there because who's son who's who's i am according to uh, gospel of john chapter 3 it says in for those who believe in him they have given him the authority to be called the children of god the authority when you when 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 we talk about an authority it is a covenant authority comes only through a covenant and what is the authority we call the children of god that means the moment my name is spoken manasse it is manasse at the same time it is connected to the lord i am the child of the most high i belong to him i got the authority to be called the child of the most high so i must have that boldness i must know that i am a person living in the world but i got a covenant with the lord through jesus christ transferred unto me and because of that i do not belong here i belong there and i am a heavenly citizen so that what was happening with abraham that what happened with abraham abraham changed from a natural citizen to a heavenly citizen and then the lord said abraham because i am changing your name because i am putting myself in you whatever i am planning to do is through you only that's the reason i have made you not i will make you i have made you father of many nations it's done it's done this is what you need to believe the moment you are in the lord and he has promised to you it is done and it will come to pass in your life in the name of jesus it will come to pass praise the lord and now it says and uh, when we come down okay when we come down it says and god said to abram um okay i just want i just want to say something here uh which uh, which is quite important 
when the Lord asked Abraham to do the circumcision, he was able to do, ask the Abraham to do circumcision any part of the body, any part of the body. But to an extent, when we look at it, why did the Lord ask Abraham to do circumcisions of the foreskin? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, Pastor. Now I can. Yeah, okay. Praise God. Um, I, that means somebody in my house has um, switched on my um, Bluetooth. Somebody switched on my Bluetooth, yes. So that's the reason. Okay. Now, when we look at it, when we deeply study about it, we will understand that the doctor says it, it is a healthy reason that the Lord asked, asked him to do a circumcision. But on another side, when we study about it, we also know that it is about the seed of Abraham. It is about the seed of Abraham. Every seed out of Abraham is a covenant seed. Every seed from that day. After the circumcision, every seed out of Abraham is a covenant seed. Every seed. Now, we need to look into, we, we need to look into Genesis when the Lord said, you know, Seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent. He never said a seed of a man. Never said that. So this is where we need to know. All our blessings, we receive our blessings. New generation church or New Testament church. How did we receive our blessings? Is through Jesus. We are not connected to Abraham. But we got the blessings through Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, we were connected to Jesus. We are connected to Abraham only through Jesus. Without Jesus, we are out. We are out. So who is important for us? Jesus. More than anybody on the face of the earth. More than anything. We sing the song, as I sung in the beginning, Abraham's blessings are mine. Yes. How did we get down to those blessings? How can we claim those blessings? Through Jesus of Nazareth. Nowhere else. And that's the reason when we come down into chapter 15, Psalm 15, and God said to Abraham, and as of your wife, Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai anymore, but Zerah shall be her name. And I will bless her. And moreover, I will give, give thee a son of her. So here, the Lord is making it more specific that I will give a son through Sarah. No doubt. And it says, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. See? Now, this is where we need to understand. When the Lord blesses, fruitfulness all automatically comes. I will tell you this. There are people who tell me, Pastor, I don't know. I have 10,000 pounds comes into my account, but I don't know where it goes. No idea. But there are on the other side, there are people, Pastor, only 1,000 pounds comes into my account. But I pay my rent, I pay everything. At the end, there is money left over. I don't know how it happens. This is the difference. When the Lord blesses you, even with little, you have plenty. But when the blessings of the Lord is not there, whatever you want, it will disappear. It is like you are putting the money in a purse with holes. So that's the reason we need the blessings of the Lord. Now, Abraham being blessed and blessed and blessed and blessed and blessed. But now when we come here, the Lord says to Abraham, I'm going to change your name. I'm going to give a covenant, but you, I want you to give a covenant with me. Cut off the foreskin. I'm going to change your wife's name. And I'm going to bless her and she will be the mother of nations. Change. Everything changed. Why? When the Lord said, I will bless her. Till today, we never saw Lord talking about the Lord blessing Sarah. Till today we saw, I will bless you. About whom? About Abraham. About Abraham. About Abraham. About Abraham. It was all about Abraham. But only here for the first time we hear that the Lord says that I'm going to bless Sarah. So what was the reason that she was not conceiving was the blessings of the Lord was not upon her. 
So when a person is not blessed, or when a person, when when we are connected to a person, why we are not blessed is because that person has not received the blessings of the Lord. So that means there is something the person has to change. Something the person has to change. I don't know how to explain this. I don't know how to explain this. But let me tell you, when the moment you are connected to some people, you will know that your blessings are just being taken away from you. When I speak this, you will understand it. When we are joining with some people, let it be business or anything, the moment you are connected to that person, you feel like somebody has sucked your blessings away. Boom! It's gone. For example, you give money to somebody. Problem. You join business with somebody. Problem. You started a church with somebody. Problem. You started a partnership with somebody. It's not working. A couple of days ago, I was talking to somebody and he said, Pastor, I was doing a business with one of one, somebody for five years and at the end, I came to a big zero and below zero. And after five years, I understood it was that person. See why? Because that person doesn't have the favor of God. That means that person hasn't got the blessing of God. So when you know that you are with a person who doesn't have the blessing of God, it is very difficult to survive. It, it, it is like a breathing difficulty. It is like, it, because the person doesn't have the blessing. Look at Abraham. Now this is where we need to understand, okay? Don't take me wrong. I want you to understand it in a clear way. The childlessness was not Abraham's fault. It was Sarah's fault. Why? Because the blessing of the Lord has not come upon Zerah yet. Maybe the Lord has delayed it for a reason. I believe in it. I strongly believe it was not Sarah's fault. It was for a reason. But the moment that Abraham went with Hagar. Now, when we look at Abraham, Abraham had the sperms to produce male child. Okay? He was, he was created for that when we look at here. Okay? The first child was Ishmael, boy. Second child, Isaac. Now, when Abraham went with Hagar, child came. But he been with Zerai for all these years, but no blessings. Why? Because the blessing of the Lord hasn't come upon Zerai. Now, if you partnership with somebody, it didn't work. You partner with somebody else, it didn't work. You partner with somebody else, it didn't work. You partner with somebody else, it didn't work. Then don't look at others. Look at yourself. Lord, am I blessed? Am I, having, am I having favor? You have to look at yourself. When you look at yourself, you will find that you are not blessed. Then you have to ask the question, why Lord? Is, is it because my time hasn't come? Or is it because there is something I need to change? What do I need to change, Lord? You ask him and he will reveal to you. He will reveal to you. He will tell you exactly if there is something in your life, he will reveal to you. So here, the Lord says, here the Lord says, and I will bless her, and moreover, I will give thee a son of her. I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. Oh, look at it. In the beginning, when God spoke to Abraham, okay, that in the beginning, when the Lord spoke to Abraham, in chapter same chapter seven, 17, chapter verse 3, and I will make my covenant between you, me and you, and I will multiply exceedingly. I had I, Abraham had little hope. Why? Because just one year back, he'd been with Hagar, and uh, Hagar had a child, so he knows that you know he still has the capacity to produce. But when he looked at Zerai, he'd been with Zerai for all these years, nothing worked. So when the Lord spoke to him, you know, saying that you know that I am going to give you a child through Zerai and she will be the mother of king and of nations. And then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. <laughs> Why? Because, oh Lord, don't joke with me. It's not going to happen. I know Zerah. It's not going to happen. That's what Abraham said. But what we need to know is that nothing is impossible with God. All things are possible with God. All things. All things are possible with God. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. And he said in his heart, Shall a child be born to him that is 100 years old? And shall Sarah that is 90 years old bear? I am already 100 years old. Okay, almost 100 years old. And my wife Sarah is 90 years old. 
How can she bear? How can we have a child? Impossible. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Because a few years back, 15 years back, I say sorry, I, I'm sorry for saying that earlier one year. 15 years back, Abraham had a 14 years Abraham had a child. Now 50, almost 14 years gone. And after that, it's happening. Now still Abraham can somehow think. Now we need to know when Abraham saying this, as a man, Abraham look at himself, he may not have the capacity. Uh, as a, a man, man's capacity because he's 100 years old. When I look at Zera, she had already had them all, every functions have stopped. Menopause and everything is done, she's completely stopped. There is no function working in Abraham, there is no function working in Zera. Everything is dead according to them. But even then, when the Lord spoke, Abraham laughed because it was impossible for Abraham to believe. Just imagine you are 60 years old and the Lord says you are he's going to give you a child that you will love. You've been trying your best to get rich for 50 years and nothing worked. And you are almost 60 years old and the Lord says you're going to make you a millionaire. You will laugh. You will laugh. Why you say, oh my Lord, don't make joke with me. I've been hearing when I was 10 years from prophet that I'll be a millionaire. Now I'm 60 years old. What is going to happen? When the Lord says, you know, when a pastor, the Lord says, you know, you planted many churches, nothing worked. Now they were going to plant that church. I'm going, I'm going to make them the biggest church. The person will say, Lord, no, 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 I understand that. Don't give me much hope. Why? Why? Because, because of the situation that people have gone through. Now that's the same thing Abraham says. Abraham laughed and he said in his son, shall I, shall a child be born unto me when I am 100 years old? And shall Sarah, that is 90 years old, bear? And Abraham said unto God, oh that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, nay, no, 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 but Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son and thou shalt call his name Isaac. Oops. Now the Lord becomes more adamant and more strict and more strong here. Abraham, you must believe me. You must not laugh. Now, this is something we need to know. When Sarah laughed in the next chapter, the Lord was not happy. But when Abraham laughed, the Lord has no issue. The Lord did not get angry. Why? Because there is a relationship between Abraham and the Lord. See, can I say something? I don't know whether you will understand this. When you are having a very close walk with the Lord, very relationship with the Lord, whatever you talk to him, he will listen to you. You can say anything. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. You can tell him anything. 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 He will even forgive you even the greatest mistakes of your life. When you have a close walk with him, close walk with him. But when I say close walk, it is not about fasting and praying and, in, and reading the Bible. That is not a close walk that everybody does. Close walk is your heart is sold out for him and you hear from him. You listen from him. He listens to you. He comes to you, visits you. You visit him. And whenever you do something, you find his favor. He, you know that he is with you. You know, that is a different book. That is a different book. And I pray that you will have that book in your life. You will experience him every day. Mm -hmm. You know, you will know him in your life. And that's, that's the reason. When we look at Abraham and the Lord. Look at the way the Lord is speaking to Abraham. The Lord is saying to Abraham everything. Look at Moses and, at Moses and the Lord. How did the Lord spoke to Moses face to face? That is a close book. That is a close relationship. And that's the same thing Abraham is having here. The Lord is building the relationship between Abraham and the Lord little by little, stronger and stronger. And now here it says, okay. And then it says, the Abraham said, and the Lord said, no, your Sarah, your thy wife shall bear thee a son and you shall call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant for his seed after him. See here, the Lord is talking about a covenant and seed. And that's the reason I said the circumcision of the foreskin was so important for the covenant because it is connected to the seed. It is connected to the seed. You should know the pain when the circumcision happens. And then you should know it is the seed that is going to keep the covenant ready and go. 
And for the covenant to go, I should go through a pain. And that pain is this pain on my body. But this pain brings a seed out. And when the seed comes out, and that seed is connected to the covenant. Okay, now, the, when we look at the Lord, Lord did die on the cross for us. He made a covenant for us on the cross, a covenant. He, he made his covenant for us on his flesh, on his flesh. His body was pierced for our transgressions. His blood was oozed out for, for the remission of our sins. He, he, that covenant he made on his body for us. In the same way, the Lord spoke to Abraham and said, Abraham, I want you to make the covenant on your flesh, cutting off the foreskin. And now Abraham, and Abraham said to the Lord, Lord, as for me, I am happy that Ishmael should walk before you. It, it's, that's fine for me. I saw Ishmael, Ishmael is around 13 years old. He's going to be 14. I am perfectly happy with it. Ishmael is a good boy. Everything is fine. Then the Lord said, I have blessed him. For as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him. He says, I have already blessed him. And I will make him fruitful. But here it says, okay, exceeding, it, it's not exceedingly fruitful, okay? It says fruitful. But I will multiply him exceedingly. Now, I want to go back. I know that we are just closing the time. Two things, okay? And I will make my covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you exceedingly. Whom? Abraham. So multiplication of generation, the, the people, comes to Abraham and Isaac and to us, the children, and exceeding multiplication comes to Ishmael as well. But when it comes to, when it comes to the, as for, as for Ishmael, I have heard thee, behold, I have blessed him, and I will make him fruitful. I will make him fruitful, not exceedingly fruitful. Fruitful, and I will multiply him exceedingly. I will multiply him exceedingly. Because the promise is given, the covenant is given, I will multiply him. If you look at it, you should, you, you know how they are multiplied. Okay? And twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation, but my covenant will I will establish with Isaac, whom Zerah shall bear, bear unto thee at this time, set time in the next day. That means now from today, one year time, you will have a child through Zerah, and you should call him Isaac. The Lord said that and said, my covenant, I will make the covenant with Isaac only, nobody else. Yes, I will, I will make fruitful your son Ishmael. He will exceedingly be a multi multiply, everything is fine, and your child will multiply exceedingly, and they will be fruitful exceedingly, my covenant will be with him. See, the importance here is the covenant, the importance. It is, there are lots of servants in my house, there are lots of people in my house, and I will give them land and everything, but who will be my hire? My son. So in the same way, yes, Ismail I will bless, everything he does I will bless, but the covenant comes too. Isaac. Now we are going to finish in five minutes. And he left off talking with him and God went up from Abraham. So that means God went up. So God came down, spoke to Abraham and he, God went up. Wow, what a beauty it is. That means the Lord came, the Lord came down from heaven, came down to Abraham, spoke to Abraham after speaking, doing everything, confirming everything, the Lord went down. And Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the self same day as God said unto him. Look at Abraham. He did the circumcision the same day. This is the first time he's about hearing about circumcision. So that means that Abraham might have asked, Lord, what do you exactly mean by circumcision? How should I do? The Lord spoke to him exactly what to do in detail. He did circumcision the same day. He did not delay. Secondly, this also shows how powerful and strong and adamant Abraham was. When the Lord said to Abraham something, Abraham did not listen to anybody. There might be people crying, Abraham, we could do it. We could do it. Abraham said, I don't care. I don't care whether you like it or not, but we are going to do it. Look at the decision of Abraham. 
This is the same decision that the Lord wants you from you as well. The, the same day the Lord says to cut off something from your life, you must cut it off the same day, not the next day. When the Lord says, remove the reproach, remove the reproach, the same day you must do. See, this is the same thing what I'm going to say. When Israelites traveled from Egypt over the journey of 40 years in the wilderness, came to Jordan, crossed Jordan, and came to Gilgal, that place, then the Lord spoke to Joshua and said, everyone who came from Israel, Egypt, circumcised them, including Joshua, Caleb, and all the other men, they circumcised in Gilgal. And then they say, the, roll, the Lord has rolled out our reproach. And they name the place Gilgal. The Lord has rolled out our reproach. Now, almost the same place, Abraham is also doing the circumcision. Almost the same place. Here, when the moment the circumcision is done, the reproach is be gone. All the past is gone away. When you take a strong decision in your life and decide to throw something away from your life, but the Lord says, enough, the moment you do that, with strong conviction, without hesitating, on the same day, let me tell you, Lord will throw away reproach from your life and he will begin to bless you. But you wait six months, eight months, one year, two year, three year, five year, ten year down the line and try to do it. It's too late. Don't be delayed. When the Lord asks you to do something, do the same day. And Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. In the self same day, Abraham circumcised and Ishmael, his son. And all the men of his house, those born in the house and those bought with money of a foreigner, were circumcised with him. Everyone got circumcised the same day. This is something we need to learn about Abraham. Abraham, when he decides something, he will do it. He have no problem doing it. That means his work with the Lord was so close and he heard the Lord say and he knew when the Lord asked to do something, he must do it. Or do you have the capacity to do that? Are you hearing from God? Can you do something exactly as the Lord is asking you to do? As I said yesterday, when you know the Lord speaks so clearly and I, hear, I heard the Lord so clearly. It was like, you know, it was a, like a video in front of me yesterday when I was about to preach. The Lord spoke to me and said, don't worry about the message. This is the title of the message. But this is exactly what you should do. You should go to this room, arrange in this way. And, uh, two people should turn, stand on the other uh, both sides. And this is, this is what I want you to do. And exactly, we did that exactly. The message went powerfully. Why? When we obey the Lord, then the Lord blesses us. And if I try to please somebody, you know, as we were arranging the room yesterday, uh, someone with me told me that uh, pastor or uh, child, you know, let us turn to the other side and stand. I said, no, we cannot turn to the other side and stand, right? The Lord said, use this side. I should face this side. You might say, come on, will the Lord say that way? Will the Lord say, turn this side only, wear one shirt only, you know, comb the hair in this way? Will the Lord say, you know, stand on one feet and one foot and preach? No, the Lord won't do that. No, the Lord does. Lord will do, ask you things so specifically. Why? Because in that way, he get pleasure. He wants to know whether you will obey him. You will obey him. Now, when I cook some, when I when here in my house, when, when we cook something, I will always say, it's need some extra salt. Okay. Why? Because that's what I like. I like it. Now, when, when we make some Indian curry, there is something called we like, you know, with Indian curry. I say, prepare for me in this way. Why? That's what I like. If as a human being, this is finally I'm saying, then we are going to pray. If as a human being, if I have a desire in my life and I want people around to fulfill it for me, how much more desire our Lord have where he wants his children to fulfill it for him. If I go to a restaurant and I tell them, this is what I want, and this is the amount of sugar or salt I want, they will do exactly for me. Okay, But when this is done in my house, it is more better. When the Lord is looking for somebody who will obey him 100%, he found Abraham. He found Abraham. He found Moses. He found Joshua. In the same way, if he can find you, my brothers and sisters, 
let me tell you, he will begin to use you in a big and mighty way. Finally, I will say, please don't try to please people. If people leave you, let them leave you. If people kick you, let them kick you. If people speak against you in Facebook, let the people speak against you in Facebook. If they want to advertise against you in newspaper, let them do it. But do not please people. Please the Lord. Do exactly, exactly, exactly as he says. Exactly as he says. And when you do that, let me tell you, financial, spiritual, emotional, physical, ministerial, all blessings will flow into your life. I am not saying that any, who's going to stay with you, who's going to leave you, who's going to kick you, who's going to hammer you. I don't know. But one thing is there, as long as the Lord is with you, you will be a champion, you will be a hero, and you will be victorious. Mm -hmm. Let's close our eyes and let's pray. Father, we thank you for this blessed evening. Thank you for each and everyone who have joined this evening. I bless them all in your mighty name. Now, as we are departing from here to, to, to sleep or to do something else. Lord, I pray that your name will be glorified. Mm -hmm. And Lord, each and everyone who gathered, I pray the blessings of Abraham, the financial blessings, the material blessings, the child, children blessings, the marriage blessings, be upon them. And your name be glorified. We love you. We worship you. In Jesus' name, Father, we ask this prayer. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, everyone. And shalom.